got the privilege of introducing you to. He's one of the funniest, most sociable men I've met in this industry. He's always a pleasure to spend some time in his company. It's Peter Kerins, who's the VP Development Global, and that's with the HAE Group, previously known as Heavyweight Air Express. That's very nice, Chris. Thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure, honestly. You're, uh, it, it's always always makes me smile whenever I see you. I'm not sure why. Yeah, either am I, to be fair. Always, always <laughs> a pleasure. Um, Peter, lovely to have you in, in, in here with us. Now, um, one of the questions we ask everybody to start with, why did you agree to come on the podcast? I think it's a very, very good thing, informative. Uh, when you look at all the magazines and stuff going around, you never get a chance to read them. This is something that I think is a good idea. I've never never seen it being done before. And of course, to sit with you, Chris, and have a chat, that's always that always helps. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And for anybody, once they see this, I was trying to get Peter to wear a pair of these just to brighten things up, but he, he, he wouldn't do it. So maybe I'll put it on a little bit little bit later. If I'd so known, I would have uh, brought me on, Chris. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, I can imagine. I'm my granddaughter, so she'll <laughs> she'll be happy one day if she sees me and knows. Right, 15 years. Yep. Gone like that, I imagine. Absolutely, absolutely. How did you get into this industry? Uh, believe it or not, I was in college. Uh, they sent me out in two weeks' work experience yeah. to a small company called Sky Express in Dublin that soon became expediters and I never left. So after my two weeks work experience, they came to me on the last day and said, listen, we're looking for a, a gopher. Yeah. And uh, I became a gopher and doing import clearances in Ireland. Yeah. And then from there, uh, I saw I stayed with them for about eight years. Ended up going off to uh, work in the airline side of it with DHL. And then that's where the adventure started when they start sending me around, uh, around the world. So I've been lucky enough to live in uh, Middle East, uh, the US, where uh, through DHL, um, working with them, managed to uh, go live in, in there, Dubai, Bahrain, um, and from my home base in Ireland. So, and I've been doing that for the past 20 years uh, out of Ireland. So it's, uh, it's that's, been That's cool. one, one thing about this industry, it gives you so many opportunities to travel. Huh? Uh, but I, I'm just starting to think now, every, my last six, seven years, I've been, all I'm doing is running into people from DHL. Yeah. Everywhere. They're, they're, they're coming in from all sort, all sides now. Absolutely. Everywhere you go, you seem to meet someone. Um, and particularly on, the, on uh, days like this, on events like this, because uh, you find a lot of the old aviation guys. Um, yeah. And for anyone that, that isn't too familiar, Express is totally different than the aviation side. Yeah, I yeah, worked on yeah. the aviation side, which was fantastic. But when you walk around here, it's guys that have worked with over the past 20 years, maybe not working with DHL anymore, but I think it's this this industry as well. It's quite close, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite yeah. a close community. But no, I, lo- I couldn't thank DHL enough for... Yeah, but they're, for they're, they're bashing me everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just the, the, my my my, um, my CEO, the CEO, Omar Hariri. Yeah. He's, well, he's in the, I same, worked at in the same industry, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then before him, the Bill Codger. Yeah. And now I'm bumping into people from DHL in Knuckle Express and yeah. everywhere I go. Let me ask you a question. Why can't DHL keep the good people? Um, Why are you all leaving? Well, I think it's different opportunities as well, you know. And there was a lot of changes there. Uh, I left actually with DHL's blessing to go to, uh, to, go to the States to open HAE. So just what the US needed was me and another Irish guy <laughs> importing ourselves over there. But that was, that was uh, DHL gave me a blessing to go and set up HAE over there. Um, and I still, to this day, I still have a, a strong relationship. The relationship that we have with DHL, the company, is, is 20 odd years ago. Yeah, and no, I'm only oh, joking so. about why can't they keep the good ones, just in case I might need a job sometime. So DHL, <laughs> apologies there. You're a great, great exporter of I was talent. trying to be as diplomatic as yeah, I could you there. Were, mate, yeah, Because, no. you know, I still work with them, Chris. So, yeah, yeah, you know. no, 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 no. Great exporter of talent. Um, right, so you came into the business by accident. Yep. Most of us did. Absolutely. Wanted to go into marketing and yeah. uh, ended up uh, doing customs clearances, yeah. sitting in a long room on a Saturday morning down to docks yes, and stuff yes. like that, you know, and then uh, just progressing there. And then when did you when did you realise this was the industry for you? It was quite soon, actually. Um, uh, uh, luckily enough, the, the guys that I worked with in, uh, in Cisco Express that became expediters, um, I had a fantastic boss at the time and uh, after about two years, three years of doing uh, clearances, he said, listen, I, I want you to go into sales. So, you know, 20, 20 odd years of age, uh, 24, 25 years of age maybe, um, going into sales. And that's just a buzz. I love, that's, a, that's the best bit about this. That's why I like this, this uh, event because, you know, it is about 
selling your wares. Yeah, as yeah, such, yeah, you know, yeah, and it's yeah, three, yeah, four, yeah. and ten stays of that. So I, I was lucky enough to have good bosses all, all along the way, um, and still do. To, and what was his name? Because what, uh, what we're doing is anybody that gets a mention for being a, you know, a positive boss or a, mm-hmm. or a, you know, somebody who influenced, we're putting their names up. Yeah. I wanted to put the dickheads up, but that's a different, that's a different list. Yeah, that's another list. And I have one, one of them as well. Yeah, and that one would probably be longer than the good <laughs> yeah. one. So. But the good lads. Who, the, who the, guy that, the guy that got me into, uh, that really got me fired up with this um, was uh, probably one of the best sales guys I've ever met, actually. A guy called John Culligan. Okay. And he's based, he works in a, he's in a freight forwarder in Dublin now still. Um, but he was the guy that told me to go off and just, uh, and do it. And, and I, he got me the job actually, more or less, um, on the on the last day, on the 11th hour as I was walking out the door. Um, and I think they were paying me about three grand a year um, at that stage. So it was, uh, no, it was good, it was good. But I have to say, I don't think there's another industry, um, unless you're a pilot or something, that allows you to visit so many places and I've been to the weird and wacky I was in uh, Baghdad under fire uh, Kabul Kandahar I actually started the DHL services there and um, when I was working for DHL Aviation in Bahrain uh, Libya but you, then you get to see some tremendous places that I've always wanted to see and that, that passes on to your kids as well so my kids are two two girls and I think they've been to about maybe 40 countries yeah. and they're adventurous yeah, yeah, um, and yeah. you know and for me um, we did a count for my youngest daughter or sorry my oldest daughter for a project for school and I think we've been to 127 countries what other industry are you going to get that in and you know I don't think um, I think it's hard to attract younger talent in because they don't see that yeah. they see yeah, yeah. the grubby trucks and yeah, you know yeah, low and airplanes and warehouses and it's probably just not sexy enough for, for kids but I'll tell you what to get into it um, you can and, find your way, can't oh, you? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the opportunities, I don't think. I, the one thing I do uh, do think is a lot of the talent that you would have in this industry is transferable anywhere. Yes, yes, yes. And that's yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. thing. So no, I'd, I'd encourage anyone to go into it. You yeah. know, and I, I absolutely don't regret a day of doing it. You know. Yeah. No. Talking about DHL, I was in Leipzig last month. Right. Okay. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah. It's. Uh, I haven't been there in a couple and of years. time when everything yeah. comes alive, it's. And when you see, and, and that's the, that's the changes. When you see what's happened in in, uh, in Leipzig, so take it back fifteen years, uh, maybe twenty years, or less than twenty years ago, and um, Leipzig there was nothing there. DHL didn't use it. Yeah, they had yeah. to go to Leipzig because of uh, Brussels, yeah. because of what happened in Brussels, and they moved everything to Leipzig. And when you look at it now, what it's done for the economy and things like that, yeah, just phenomenal, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it is some operation. We, you could say that about all the integrators, you know, the, when you see the night operations, many nights I've spent in warehouses, Chris, in exotic places like East Midlands Airport. Oh, yes. You know, in December, yeah. walking around, uh, you know, doing doing uh, hub tours and things like that. So, you know, it is fantastic. It's really it's yeah. a great industry to get into, you know. But you're saying that but because of Brussels. What was the reason there? And um, it was the noise uh, restrictions. Noise, noise abatement. Noise yeah, time. and uh, like DHL operated <laughs> every single intercom flight. And plus their, their uh, European networks, ex Brussels, and um, yeah. they had to move out. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think something like there was ten thousand jobs affected by that move. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah. so you know, I understand the noise pollution and things like that. But um, uh, it was a big move, a big yeah, move, and Brussels. it affects so many people's lives as well. Oh, absolutely, it wasn't just the people that worked in DHL; it was the suppliers, yeah. it was the guys that did sandwiches. It was um, a couple of places. There used to be a place in Brussels called the Hub Pub. Yeah, you you've probably been yeah, there, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it was that was literally built around DHL people. Yeah, um, and I think even something that small, you know, the cottage industry is small. They suffered because of the move, but I suppose one man's gain because uh, yeah, and yeah, Leipzig, yeah. I think economically was a probably a better place to, to, uh, to operate from, you know? Yeah, no, we had Steve Pullman's in this morning and, you know, if ever there's somebody yeah. who's good at promoting and, and overcoming challenges, you know, and he was he was talking about Brussels as well. Yeah, yeah. And I was talking about the noise abatement and a couple of the visits I had to make there as well. Mm. And then I was explaining to him, you know, it's no wonder people are up in arms about Brexit. Yeah, you know, yeah. when you've all that, <laughs> that simplicity and sustainability in Europe. It's Absolutely. crazy. Absolutely. Crazy. Absolutely. So we've got one we've got one gentleman's name now as a, as a mentor or a coach. Is there any others that... that helped you in a certain way or drove you or pushed you there's there's a lot there's a lot and you know one of the when when i moved to the us for example um uh, i went with another Irish guy a guy called ian hutchinson 
And uh, apart from the fact that we're good friends um, and our families are good friends and things like that, to go over and start a business from scratch, we didn't even have a contract when we went. And um, so two Irish girls rocked up into, uh, into Chicago to start HAE Group, um, which I think now has nine offices in, in the US and um, South America. Um, so it's been a real success. But I remember driving home and every we we one car between us yeah, yeah, when we yeah. moved over. And we used to drive home every Friday. And the thing was, next week is going to be better. Yeah. And, you know, to, to spend that time with developing a business from zero to, you know, tens of millions. And um, it was great to have someone beside you doing it. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. as passionate as you were. That was, you know, as it was a friend. You know, there was there was good and bad. There was tears and, and what have you. The whole hiring people is totally different in the States than it is. Yo. In, you know, so you, there's mind fields. Yeah, yeah. it, it changes from state to state, never mind yeah, yeah. country. Um, but I, I think Ian has, you know, he's been... Um, What's he doing now? He's still with HAE. He runs the Americas oh, nice for one. HAE. Yeah, he uh, he based himself back in Ireland a couple of years ago. So he tends to spend a lot of time on planes. But yeah, we, uh, we're we still very close. Our families are very close. Um, but he's been a great support to me over the years, you know. But I could say that about 500 people that I've met, um, yeah. you know, or that I've worked with. Um, just phenomenal people, you know. And I, that's... If I was to say one thing about this industry is that I've made great friends out of it. If I left tomorrow, left the industry tomorrow, I've made some great friends. Yeah. And they're friends that no matter where you are in the world, because of all the travel, you know, picking up a phone, you know, trying to have a glass of wine, trying to have a pint somewhere, yeah. you know, and, and that's the beauty of it. That's, you know, so uh, yeah, it's people like that. It's a lot of them. A and lot it is nice, doesn't it? Because I, I was with somebody the other night and we were, we were sitting down and, and, and they said, right, how many people could you write down that you would love to spend a Friday night with or a weekend away with on a golfing trip or whatever. Yeah. And there was two lads that were there who were with us and they were in a completely different industry. Yeah. And they were amazed, or they were either amazed or they thought we were lonely yeah. because we were writing so many people's names down. They, yeah. couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't get the yeah. grips with and it. And that's, that's the bizarre thing. And that, that's why I like, um, I like Munich. And out of all the shows, I think, um, A, I think this is the most relevant. Yeah. So, you know, getting getting young people in here, I think that's important yeah. to see what this is about. This yeah. isn't, you know, you get some of the regional shows, and I understand that, some of the, the smaller shows, but this is worth saving up for, if yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. No, 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 and exactly you get to me, see yeah. so many people yeah. um, that you only see maybe every two years. You might yeah. have emails and talk to them. Yeah. You know, people across the opposite side of the world, um, I'm based in Dubai now, so, you know, getting to see people in, in the States or South America, it's not as easy. Yeah. As, as it was you know even with Skype and things like that but when you walk it's around not the this, same. It's not no the same. it's not the no, same no. but when you walk around this hall yeah. you know and you go to go to some of the usual uh, hot spots in the hall it's just fantastic to see yeah. those people you know um, that, you, that you wouldn't see too often and yep. you just have great relationships with them so I like that, that that's, that's one of the best bits about it Chris is the people and it's so impressive this is such an impressive oh, absolutely. event huh? absolutely. and the rest of the halls as well Yeah, which is a different world again yeah, well, I'm dealing with a broken foot, Chris, so I'm looking for a scooter to get down to the other halls. I'm there, sure so. they'll get you one. So, and, you know, tell us a bit about your dancing career. So how did that happen? Yeah, it's been um, it's been up and down. Uh, it's been up and down. Um, but ballet isn't for everyone. No, and, and I can see you're, I mean, physically you're made for it. Absolutely, absolutely. So what um, happened? Was it a, a pirouette? or? What, it was, what? yeah. It came down harsh um, yeah. uh, and uh, managed to break both feet in the space of a couple of months. So, uh, yeah, so I think my career in the uh, Royal London Ballet is probably done yeah, now. Yeah, gone, gone. But, you know, there's always there's always the funky chicken, Chris. Exactly, you know? mate, yeah, and I'd love to see you do that. <laughs> but seriously, how did you, how did you do it? Uh, playing football. So, uh, well, I say playing football, but my wife says it's because I'm old and slow. Um, but I managed to, uh, I've never had a break in playing football for business end of well, 45, 47 years something like that um, since I was 3 or 4 and uh, I managed to get 2 breaks in I like the, the way you got the 3 months. or 4 in there yeah yeah. hey that was that was a good one <laughs> was wasn't it hey 3 or 4 yeah, yeah. it's not just that right Chris 3 or 4 my yeah <laughs> no but it's good to keep doing things isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely and, uh, that's, that's one of my one of my passions is, uh, is sport but football in particular and um, and I don't know why, given that I'm a Queen's Park Ranger support, you wouldn't think... Rangers, yeah, Loftus Road, eh? Yeah, and you wouldn't think you'd like football, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I love, still play. And actually, through the industry um, in Dubai, we, uh, we play with a lot of in industry guys in Dubai. 
um, and it's, it's quite good, you know, and these guys are from different aspects, from handling or, you know, DHL or, you know, yeah, yeah. and we're all sort of, dip, you know, in and around some pilots. Um, so it's, it's good. Pilots are pretty soft, though. You know, yeah, well, they've got to be very careful. Yeah, they're that. a bit precious. I mean, a bit not, precious, Chris. Yeah. You know? they, don't, they don't work that much as it is, so they yeah, can't afford I, it. I don't think they see it as a physical no, contest. No, so, no, no, no. you know, well, hey ho. Yeah, exactly. Now, talking about talking about the years you've been there, now, I'm, I'm a big believer that there's a lot of people with a lot of hot air in this business as well, like any business. Yes. And the ones who you really want to spend time with are the ones who openly admit, you know, they've made a few mistakes, they've come back, they've learned from it. What would you say are couple of the biggest mistakes you've made but such a great learning experience oh yeah god chris there's been a lot but you know as you say they are learning experience and the one the one of the biggest things actually has been people management yeah and um, worked with some wonderful people and um, but not realize having to realize when you start taking over and um, significant numbers of people to manage and um, we all have bad days. We all have good days. We all have different stuff going on. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And I think maybe in the past, I probably haven't considered that in, in with some people, yeah, particularly yeah. in the early days when I start managing people. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I think that, that has been one thing that I, I wouldn't say regret, but definitely something I've learned from. Absolutely something I've learned from. But also, we, have, we just look out the door and you see the cultural differences Yep. Now, getting, to, yep. getting to know how to manage a guy from Egypt to a guy from China to a guy from the UK to a guy from Ireland it's so different it's different culturally known um, just the, the, the very simple things I remember um, uh, being out in Japan with NCA uh, a couple of years ago and they brought me out to uh, they brought me out for a meal and it was in a beautiful old Japanese house yep um, uh, absolutely stunning double story house and the gentleman that we went with we we, uh, there was a couple of the guys there um, I think a couple of the boys are actually here walking around but I was with one of their VPs and because I was the most senior of our company and he was the most senior of our company and um, the guys explained to me that I had to pour sake for him all night yeah. and he but not realising that this man could drink sake and I couldn't and well, I can see that you're not drunk anything here either. No, no, it's, it, I'm, I'm sort of a, I'm an Irish guy that. No, 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 no. no that's not no, believable. No, no, it's not believable. No, no. but um, yeah, but he uh, having sake with him all night and realizing that every time that he poured for me, I'd have to pour for him. Yeah, and I remember vividly until about an hour before we finished. You know, someone told me, um, and uh, yeah, so cultural things like that you know they can trip you up um, but no that's that's really good you know meeting all these different people known differently uh, particularly around the Middle East Chris you've been around yeah, the yeah. Middle East yeah, yeah. The, the, the difference from country to country you know never mind you know the uh, uh, continents yep. these yep. are just from countries that's 40 minutes away like I lived in Bahrain it's so much different than than living in Dubai and the people Abu are Dhabi, different Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, Dhabi is yeah, yeah absolutely you go across um, I was uh, lucky enough to go out uh, on a, a golf tour um, but because of my broken feet I was just a beer getter yeah. um, uh, about two weeks ago on Ras Al Khaimah that's an hour away from Dubai and that is significantly different yeah. it's then, nice down there though isn't it yeah it's quite nice yeah. Yeah. at 42 degrees though Chris it wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't great but yeah, Please I, feel, feel free now thanks Thanks. Because I, I feel bad. I was letting it go cold. I feel, I feel bad. Now, as far as um, as far as out in the Middle East, and, and I know because I, I bump into you so many times at the rugby, you like you like your rugby as oh, well. Oh, yeah. You're going over to Japan this year? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah? I hope so, yeah. yeah. Do you know which game yet? Or uh, I'm looking to go to Scotland, Ireland, and Ireland, Japan. That'll be a good one. Yeah, and that's all in the space of uh, uh, eight days or something like that. Yeah. But uh, given that my family live back in Dublin, um, and I'm in Dubai, you know it's it, it's easier this to you know go off for a week to, to watch a bit of rugby. But I'm passionate about rugby. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, were, were you in Chicago? I when, wasn't. When you weren't. No. no That's what, I wasn't. what an incredible, right? yeah. incredible game. I do. I've been to a few games this year, so um, I've, I've been back in Dublin for a few games. Not doing so well though. No, I, I, I was unfortunate to be there for Ireland England. Um, and watching a grown man cry 
um, after a game like that because I was with a lot of English guys yeah, yeah, um, in Dublin yeah. and, uh, and I, I, I took it in the neck that day but Johnny Sexton he, he didn't look as if he was no. he didn't, there was something not right you know no I had, a, I had some genius this morning telling me that he thinks they're saving it up for the World Cup could be yeah, I can't see that. Could be, but I uh, think I think all the home countries have got great great opportunities. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, all of them, all of them. Yeah, I think uh, I think Wales. Um, yeah, Wales, great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Scotland as well. I believe it or not, I've probably been to see more English games than I've been to see Irish games yeah. over the years, just because of uh, being in the UK and stuff like that. Um, and I think England could be in really shout, but I'm, I'm shouting for Japan. I think Japan win that on their home tour would be great. As long as they do well. Oh yeah. Oh, as long well, as they, they do well, uh, and couple, they have done, they've always done well. A couple of shocks in the last ones. Yes, so, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah, good. yeah, yeah. No, that was incredible, wasn't it? Now, your wife. Yep. If I was to say to her now, in all the things that she's seen and listened to, what do you think she'd say? This is what he should change. What would hairstyle? Let's say Chris for one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, no, I, I, I've. Uh, of an allergy to bunny ears. You sure, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, no, what would I change? Um, I don't know. We've been together a long time. Um, we're going out since we were 13 years of age. Blimey. Yeah. So, uh, what, would I, what would she change? That's lovely. Well, That's I mean, not playing football. That would be our first yeah, yeah, she's yeah. already came up with that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no more football. Um, and... Uh, I'd say do more around the house and stuff like that, you know, the usual. Well, eh, being 3,000 miles away, it's a bit difficult to get I was going to say, you've you know? got a little bit of a break. Yeah. But how is she with the workload? and the, Yeah, yeah, she's know? she's been as good as gold. Um, when, when we decided to move out of Ireland, when I was asked to move out of Ireland, don't live in Dubai the first time, which is close to 20 years ago, Yeah, she, uh, she worked in criminal law for the, the largest criminal law firm in Ireland. And she gave that up to travel. Blimey. Absolutely, gave it up to travel. Um, she then worked in Dubai in a, a law firm and then in Bahrain in a bank. Every time I've asked her to move, she said, yeah, absolutely, no problem. So just uh, never questioned, never questioned anything. Um, and for that, you know, you've got to remember that, the support of the family as well. Uh, 100%, 100%. In, in, when you're traveling, like I, I've had a, the year before last, I think I was away for 36 weeks out of 52. You know, because it's quite a big region and stuff like that. So that's so, why you carried a picture of her in the wallet, yeah? Uh, yeah. That's a long time, though, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. That's, that's another thing. This industry, when you, when you talk to people outside of it mm. and they say, where have you been? Mm. They can't get over how much travelling you actually do. Absolutely. It's, um, I, I don't regret a minute of it. I, uh, sometimes I do regret, regret going into um, the border between Afghanistan and, and uh, Pakistan a few years ago. And... Uh, the guy who was meant to be showing me around in a in a armored car because it was at a pretty rocky time. Yeah. Uh, decided to take me in his Daihatsu charade up the hills, and my wife called as I was halfway up, and she thought I was being I was being and taken. Knew, yeah. Um, and to be fair, I thought I was being taken, but you know, a couple of hours talking me to give me back. But uh, you know, things like that uh, I've just been immense. Going to places, I've made some great friends around the world. Places that I never thought I'd go to. Like being able to um, uh, Africa, some of Africa, just beautiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, getting getting around the states. I lived there for for over six years, and I've, I've been go, go there regularly now. Still haven't seen a lot of it because you end up hopping through airports. Yep, yep, yep. And every state's different. I, I, in, I've been going to Cairo for at least twenty years, and I just realised on my last trip, and I go up pretty regularly. That I haven't left a ten kilometer um, yep. ring around the airport, you know. But it's it's great. You get to see these places. It's absolutely fantastic. That's good. Now, with all the travel and all the things you've done, yep. I've asked a few people bucket list. What 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 would you like to do that you haven't done? Do you think? What would I like to do that yeah. I haven't done? Um, oh God, that's a good one. I don't know anything I would have uh, one thing I would have loved it's not possible anymore one thing I would have loved to have done was flown Concorde yeah yeah never had the opportunity never had the opportunity and I don't like flying that's the thing do all this travel and I hate flying yeah, 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 I'm pretty yeah. nervous um, and, and did you read much yeah absolutely what's um, what, who's your 
I like uh, I do a lot of um, well one, what I'm reading at the moment actually is a lot of Jerry, Jeremy Clarkson stuff um, on oh, his yeah. columns that he puts into the, He's the, funny the, man, the yeah and I, they're quite good but I like um, autobiographies absolutely love and some historical stuff um, I like all that you know uh, particularly Irish history um, pretty interested in that and how uh, how the England English invaded and all this sort of stuff and where we came from. So I, I like all that, you know. Um, but uh, we were talking to one one fella and he was in, and he, he's not Irish at all, and he knew so much, and uh, he, he knew Michael Collins, and yeah. you know he knew where he was where he was killed and everything. And like my family are from West Cork, so yeah. I was telling him, you know, it's amazing. But even even going home to Ireland, so uh, I've holidayed in Ireland a couple of times. Um, over the past few years because I've, I've got two daughters and I want them to know they've never lived there yeah, oh. they were born in the US and lived most of their life in, in the Middle East so they've gone back and I want them to see a bit of it you know like but there's places that I haven't seen yet you know and there's some beautiful places in yeah. Ireland it would be a wonderful country if they put a roof on it yeah. because it just <laughs> rains way too much but yeah, yeah, we're yeah. a fabulous place you know yeah. and, um, so I, I, I tend to I tend to read up a lot about that you know because the kids are going to start asking me questions and I'm not going to be able to answer yeah. after you know, um, for, for to help them with, with homework and stuff yeah, like that. But I just is, don't know. It is lovely. My, my daughter studied in Dublin. Right. And um, we used to spend so many weekends over there. And you cannot, I don't think, anywhere, irrespective of the weather. Yeah. I don't yeah. think there's anywhere where you can get a better weekend. No, nah, it's, it's a great... Uh, we live just, just on the coast, um, about 10 kilometres from the centre of Dublin. And it's absolutely fantastic. Where, just whereabouts? Few, uh, down towards Malahide. Oh, Malahide, yeah. Gibneys. Yeah, absolutely. That's me you local. Know Gibneys, is it? Gibneys is me local. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're about uh, five minutes from from downtown. Yeah. Um, but the kids, uh, that, that I drive the kids to Sutton along the coast in the morning. And it's one of the most beautiful. It is a beautiful place. Um, but again, you oh, know, that's incredible. Yeah, you'd want to you want to have your wellies with you. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, but give, give me this. Do you know you know Ray Hazley, do you? Do you yeah. know Hazley? You know Ray? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a really good friend of mine. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he's been a pain in the ass. Yeah, I've been going out to give years. Yeah, so yeah. you know all these yeah. the brothers and Funny enough, I was, only out, and... I was out there on Sunday, just no, before no. I got here. I got in on Saturday night, went out on Sunday afternoon, and uh, yeah, beautiful. Great place, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's That's good. lovely. And, and lovely, lovely restaurants. and Oh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, you can... There, there must be about 60 restaurants there. Um, yeah. So it's a really good place. No, it's like beautiful, it. beautiful. Now, you're talking about biographies. Yeah. One of the things I try and do is is write a title right. as if it was your biography right. or anybody that comes on so that by the end of it, we've got it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put thumbnails. So there'll be you on a book right. and, and, and I've already done the title for you. Yeah, uh, well, I, 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 one, one that I read uh, many years ago, actually, and was portrayed excellently uh, by Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, um, and it was called My Left Foot. Yes. Well, and yeah. uh, I think we'd, uh, both my left feet. That would be the you know that'd be uh, pretty apt. Anyone that's seen me playing football would know that. I've got something here for you. Yeah. Now, uh, now as far as as far as books and everything, mm. what what do you think has been the biggest disruptor to the industry in the last five five six years? You know what? I think it's only coming now, Chris. I do think it's only coming. I I, th I think that um, you know, we're not, uh, personally, going around, you know, anything from the the largest airlines in the world to still was very antiquated. Not a lot, not a lot of trust in technology. Yep, yep, yep. And it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely madness, madness. Yep. Um, but I think now people are beginning to embrace it. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know, even ourselves, we have. Um, HAE, we ran off a system that, that uh, for many years that was it was good for us, good for our function, it wasn't good for anyone else. Um, I think we now have about 14 programmers um, that, that's all they do is technology. Yeah. And one thing that we found, and I'm sure most people in the hall here, the way to win business, and when we've looked through all these stats throughout our, throughout our global network um, yeah. on this system, that speed of response, yes, speed of quote, yes, yes. we seal it's, it's in the 70s. 70% 70 of our quotes when we reply within 15 minutes. Yeah. But I don't, it's gathering all that information. It's, um, you know, if you look at it now, um, being down in, in Dubai, which is still, it's, quite, it's a big market. It's a big market. But when I go around and people still still handing out um, rate sheets and things like yep, that, yep, that's yep. a destination guide now. Yep, yep, but yep. when people embrace that, the speed of quote, we found that anything after is it two hours? I think it's two hours. 
Anything after that, we close about 15% of quotes. Yeah. Anything within the first 15 minutes, we're closing 70%. Yeah. You know, and that goes for, that, I'm sure that goes for every airline. Um, yeah. But being able to harvest all that data, but, you know, I think it's only coming now. Yeah. I think it's still quite antiquated. I see, I've, every year, and you've, you've seen this, Chris, have been coming here for a long time. There's more and more technology firms. Yes, and it's and it's so interesting as well. Absolutely, and absolutely. The, but the way they're presenting it now, yeah, is so different. Yeah, but it's it's easy to use because remember, it's not us, and um, you know, well, definitely not me. I'm, I'm a, I wouldn't say I'm technically gifted when it comes to technology, but these kids coming in on social media, yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah, used yeah. they're used to speed. Kids yeah. want speed. Yeah. I see when we when we teenage daughter, she wants speed of everything. Yeah. If it's not good enough, you know, we we go to somewhere remote. If the Wi-Fi isn't good enough, you know, there's 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 a problem. Where speed and you know the the uh, that's what I think the the industry lacked. Yep, was speed of response. And agility, agility, absolutely flexibility yeah. in in, in yeah. what they do as well. You know, we we've definitely um, uh, over the years I've seen it, and it's it is refreshing to see all the technology companies here. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I love absolutely. it absolutely. And, and listen, talking to these guys, I get more of an education out of this than I probably did doing a, a few years in college. I know. By sitting and talking to them now, yeah. some of it goes straight over my head. But you know, these guys it makes sense what they're saying. And the one thing that that they seem to be getting, and um, particularly all the all the guys that produce the the various systems, the the platforms, is m- modular approach to it. Being able to change something because it, while it's it may suit A, it yep. doesn't suit yep. B, yep. Yep. and it's easier to change. And you know, with all cloud-based stuff, and you know, it's just getting so much easier. So I think that's that's one thing. I think, and um, you know, the the, the flexible approach, yeah. and and it's uh, the same with training. Absolutely, training, and and, and like I'm doing work with a, a company called Nakel Express in in Saudi, and I'm so impressed with some of the young guys and and the things that they're doing. But they do it so quickly. Yeah, you know, some of the apps. Yeah. Some of the, the things for cus- immediate customer experience mm-hmm. responses, yeah. and it's you know somebody says it in a meeting, mm-hmm. and then it's done straight away, you know. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And the customer the customer experience, every Monday mm-hmm. they go through every single tweet or bad customer yeah. experience, and they 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 want to they want to iron yeah. it out. It's but, impressive. But they understand it so well, you know. Yeah. And I do get it that, that you know, I th- does I don't think anything is going to replace the human approach to what we do. And I think witness to that is outside. You know, if yeah. you're going to see what fifty thousand people over the next couple of days go through these halls, and people like doing business with people. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to be completely replaced, but definitely technology is coming a long way. And you know, everyone talking about e-commerce, this and and what have you. Our business is still quite a simple business. Yeah. Yeah. It's just how we can make it more efficient without too many more hands involved exactly um, the enablers know, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah and that's what it is that's that's how i see it yeah, yeah. yeah. i agree yeah. but e-commerce in itself most people haven't got a clue what no, to do with it no I've, I've had someone come to me um recently chris and uh it was a it was, it was a guy i've known pretty well and very intelligent guy and he came to me and said uh peter won't do e-commerce and i went okay well he said what's right i want to do e-commerce yeah yeah, that's I went, it, yeah. yeah, yeah what do you I want said, to do with it what 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 part of it do you want to do and he said, "No, just e-commerce." I said, "That's so, you know, yeah, it's yeah, so exactly, broad. Exactly, exactly. You know, everyone, everyone is just thinking it's it's Amazon shipping parcels to yeah, someone's yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. It's not. There's, this is a range of things. This is anything from, you know, some of the things that uh, that I think the industry could could definitely look at is the um, the financial, the fintech sort of yeah, stuff, yes, financial yes. industry. Because isn't that the biggest problem that that uh, in a lot of in a lot of countries where you don't have secured payment systems and things yep. like that? Yeah. You know, this could be this could be the way forward. You and, know, and now there's a, now there's a new rule coming in with the verification of the payment, and they're all panicking Absolutely. now. Absolutely, what, what an impact that's going to make. And on you see, it, again, it changes country to country. You go yep. to the states where cash in Europe, you can go and pull the money out of a bank. You can't do it in the states because of antitrust and, and things yeah, like yeah. that. You know, so yeah. it seems like that that you know, as well as the bells and whistles. You know, there's your there's your FWB, there's your um, pre alert, there's yep. your POD. The payment side is pretty important as it well. Is, it you is, know? And, and now also people are getting to know what first mile, last mile, absolutely basket value. You know, what do you do with all the returns? It's a, it's absolutely. A, I know people who make a business, Chris, out of returns. Yeah, the amount of stuff that's refused down in um, down in a, a friend that works in the post office, and um, he's a operations director for a post, postal authority. 
And he said, the amount of stuff when people come in that they've ordered and they've paid, but they don't want to pay the shipping on it, so they refuse it. Yeah, yeah. And they leave the goods. The goods are paid for. Yes, yes. And there's companies that actually make a living out of selling these on yeah. legally, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, there's so many different aspects to it. Huge amount of aspects. But, you know, I, I definitely think that... Um, but I think our business is catching up. We, we, you know, sorry, catching up with the concept. It's being pulled up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think so. I think you have it's to. It's being pulled up. Yeah. And, and, and now with all these, you know, the Alibaba, Jolly Chick, mm-hmm. Amazons, they're all... Basically saying, if you don't, if you don't pull yourselves together, we'll do it ourselves. We'll do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's been, I think, that's been one of the biggest and most refreshing yeah. pressures that's been put on them. So for any youngsters who think they're coming into the business as well, yeah. it doesn't matter how traditional or how old or mm. or how much experience people have got. There's going to be so many changes coming yeah, up, which absolutely. need a new way of working. Do you know what, Chris? I had a I had a discussion with someone at one of these shows um, about one of the governing bodies, uh, one of the. Uh, uh, the, the old school, if you like, bodies yep. that exist within our industry. And there was, say, seven guys on the board. I suggested, and I was laughed at nearly, why don't you get seven young people to sit with the seven older people that aren't affecting too many changes? And I, I say that with the greatest of respect. Well, get seven young people in because they're going to see stuff that we're not going to see. They're gonna not gonna see. They're gonna see stuff that you don't see. And if you want to take it forward, just let them shadow you for a year. Yeah. And see what happens. The trouble is finding seven people with enough confidence to do it. Yeah. Well, listen, out there, go to a. You know, we we've looked at a um, going to some of the colleges. Yeah. Um, you no, know, I agree with some, you. Get some it, really yeah. bright yeah. kids. You know. Yeah. But they understand a lot and a lot more than we do, Chris. When it comes to when it comes to social media, the power of social media. When you see that, and um, you know, coming out here. Uh, and you see the amount of companies that have put up were in Air Cargo Munich. It pops up on your LinkedIn yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever it may be. Or just looking at this. Yeah, these guys will know something I mean, different. This, this is, when you just go through this, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. The companies and yeah. what they stand for, it's incredible. I'm sure if you took young people, I see a lot of young people walking around, but I'm sure they're only picking up key rings and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, yeah, a lot of them are on giveaway tour. If you went to, uh, if, you, if you brought a few people here, I tell you what, I think it changed our mind on the industry. Yeah, you know, yep. because the first introduction to a lot of us, Chris, it, back in the day, was the inside of a warehouse. Yes, yeah, that yeah, was our yeah. first introduction. Yeah, you know, and it was, um, you know, and you never imagined that that small warehouse no. was linked to the rest of the world. Absolutely, absolutely, you couldn't see beyond that. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I think you know, showing people events like this, um, you know, and getting it out there, uh, young people, I think. You know, I think there's a there there are there are solutions tomorrow, aren't they? So yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Now another thing, and obviously not with your legs, with your two broken feet, but uh, un, under normal circumstance, any Irishman loves his music. Yeah, absolutely. What's the what's the one song that gets you up, no matter where you are? Oh, whiskey in the jar. Whiskey, absolutely, without a doubt. Whiskey in the jar. Do you know? You just reminded me of something. Huh? I remember you. We were in uh, we were in Dubai at the Sevens. Mm-hmm. I don't know where we were, and there was a guy doing an Elvis impression. Ah, oh, that was a DHL. It was, was it, a, it was a DHL. I thing, met thing. him in the toilet. Brilliant. Well, I met the fella in the toilet, and I said to him, oh, "I said, I said the fancy dresses are getting better and better." I said, "You actually look a little bit like him." Yeah. And he said, no, he said, I'm doing a, I'm, I'm an impersonator. Elvis yeah. asked him, get out of it. They bring him and to all said, the events there. Yeah. He said, come round and see me. I'll be on in a minute. And we were up at the back of the stand and I could hear Elvis. I love Elvis. Yeah, yeah. And I said to my missus, I've got to go down and see him. He was superb, wasn't he? Uh, and they bring him every year And he now. was Elvis with a sense of humor. They he was bring him absolutely... every year. He was that good. And that was... Oh, he comes every year, does Yeah, he? and that was literally by chance um, that he, he was there that year. They didn't know how it was going to work out. But now he's such a big hit, and they've actually taken him to other events, so sales meetings and things like that. Oh, seriously? Yeah, yeah. And it's really, uh, he's very good. He's oh, very good. He's I don't like a bit of Elvis myself, you know. Yeah, um, well, yeah. yeah. Well, I did not want to leave that evening. Nah, it's fantastic. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You going this year? Um, yes, I think I'd missed last year through travel. Um, so I'm not missing this year, and that was the first time in ten years that I've missed it. Yeah, me too. I've missed yeah. it, and it's, it's the event of the year. You know, it's great fun. It, you know, you, you you can mix a bit of a bit of business, 
but it is the best sevens tournament, you know. So oh, I love it. I, I do enjoy it. it. And that time of the year, the weather's just perfect. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, yeah, we definitely doing that. Yeah. Chris, I'll try you an invitation. Oh no, yeah, my son's playing this year. So oh, is he? Yeah, he's got a team in it again, so right, okay, that right, makes good. it even better. So you can go. Maybe you could throw me content. one then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got, I, I've definitely got to get one myself now. But but no, but I look forward uh, to seeing you there. Now, listen. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. We're coming to the end. The title of the book that I would give you is mm. Twinkle Toes from Ballet to Cargo. Oh, I like and I that. think if anybody read that, yeah. they'd be very, very impressed with yeah. everything that they would see. Uh, bring a tear to a glass of it, that it, one, Chris. It would, you mate, know? yeah. And then a little bit of whiskey in the jar in the background. Absolutely, absolutely. So listen, it's a pleasure. You're Honestly, you're one of the nicest, most sociable men I've ever met in this business. And it's always a pleasure. I thank you for your time. No, you're welcome, Now, if Chris. anybody wanted to get in touch with you, mm. how would they do so? And, and obviously not your personal email, but yeah, we've how got would they a, get in touch with you? Well, for the next three or four days, I'm here. Yep. And um, we have a stand here, HAE, have yep. a stand. And um, yeah, and if anyone wants to come and have a chat, um, I'm up there for a bit. I've got obviously a lot of meetings, a lot going on, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to talk to anyone as, you know, over the next few days. It's, it's brilliant. And thanks for this, Chris. This has been uh, absolute This pleasure. has been quite refreshing. I've really enjoyed, enjoyed that. It. I was a bit worried earlier, you know. And well, when, when, I, I was... when I brought the bunny outfit and stuff. Yeah, but... yeah, that, that, that got me. But uh, no, it's been great. And thanks very much, Chris. So really I, appreciate it's, it. It's always a pleasure. I never sure. Thank you indeed. Thank you. All the best.